What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Cancelled Episode 3. This is the show where we talk about anything and everything that was eventually cancelled. The Carnival Corporation in simple terms is absolutely gigantic. Along with the Carnival brand, they also own seven other cruise lines. The Carnival line itself currently sails 25 vessels, which makes it the largest cruise line in the world. Most of their ships, at least in terms of design, are pretty basic in today's standards. However, in the early 2000s, the company had something in the works that was really going to blow everything out of the water. A project many people have no idea ever existed. And that's the Pinnacle Project. This project started around 2003 to 2004. Carnival executives sent out a memo to their departments to start working on something that would really outdo all of their competition. They wanted to build a ship unlike any other. You know, there's actually not a whole lot of available information on this project. So, I got the chance to sit down with Joseph Farkas, a legendary architect for many of the Carnival ships, and one of the actual lead designers of the Pinnacle Project. As a designer, you would like to do absolutely everything. Right. You know, the sky's the limit. Right. Uh, you know, but however, being a practical uh, architect and working for Carnival already at that time, 20 years, let's say, or close to it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I knew that this thing had to be built. So the challenge is to create all these, you know, what have come to be known as wow features in a envelope that could be built, right. you know, that was affordable. Um, and then, then we had the big um, open deck at the main public room level. Uh, probably something that most people didn't get was that we created a, a room that came in from that deck that you could pass through. And it was a room that had, uh, I don't remember how many decks high it was, you know, but, but the, it, we envisioned doing an aerial like Cirque du Soleil show in that room. But it also could be something that people could do you know, rock climbing and things like that, and, and, and you know, sort of an adventure. You know, again, just to create adventures that that would be great in a in a big landside hotel. Yeah that you know that, or water park or something like that now this vessel would have been absolutely massive weighing well over 200,000 tons it would have been the largest cruise ship in the world by far at the time the largest cruise ship was the queen mary 2 at around 150,000 tons pinnacle was well equipped with some crazy features too there is a lot to note but one of the most striking and innovative was the people mover system a series of essentially suspended monorails that would circle decks 16 and 2. At midship, a vertical moving track would carry cars between the two lines. Since the ship's size would have exceeded a passenger count of 5,000 people, this would have provided a legitimate practical use. While at a first glance the people mover system may have been the most obscure feature, Pinnacle also had some interesting recreational elements. The lower promenade sun deck would feature various entertainment options, unheard of that low on a vessel. Because of the extended width of the deck, it would feature ample lounge seating, basketball courts, and a lazy river. Moving upwards towards the top decks 14, 15, 16, and 17, the ship's features get even more incredible. Just behind the ship's indoor pool is what I'm calling the mountain pool. In the center of what I'm assuming is the family area towers a massive artificial mountain. Two slides would twist through the rocks with one of the pools partially surrounded by a cave. On the other side of the rock face would fittingly feature a rock climbing wall overlooking another pool. Moving aft sits the largest carnival funnel built. While serving its functional use, a large portion of the face would be made of colored glass. This would act as the skylight for the ship's stern atrium, spanning 13 decks. Now the way the vessel was designed towards the stern was quite different. From decks 4 to 15, a split structure of two towers would create a very unique exterior deck. Massive sheets of glass would cover the aft atrium, which would look down onto the stern deck. Two absolutely massive water slides would drop almost the full length of the two towers into an infinity pool on deck 5. The split structure of the aft actually came from a concept that Joe had developed all the way back in the 80s. A concept that was never realized by Carnival and was eventually adopted by Royal Caribbean in 2006. So Pinnacle was clearly way ahead of its time, yet still fundamentally practical. 
Carnival went far with this concept too, as the logistics were actually drawn up. The shipyard Carnival had planned to build in had invested in building a simulator of what the vessel would look like in a 3D perspective. Everyone at Carnival seemed very enthusiastic about the project, and the plan seemed promising. So why was this project ultimately cancelled? You know, we've studied all of the real technical requirements, and the ship, the proposal we had on the table, was a real ship. You know, that it, it was, uh, the, the engines were in it, the, and the people mover design was in it. You know, we talked to, you know, to the people that would supply these things, and they calculated a real price. And, you know, they say timing is everything. Well, timing is what screwed us on that project, because it, it, between the time we started designing it and between the time the um, price was calculated, the euro started going up. And that swing on the euro-dollar uh, ratio is what ultimately sank the project. It, 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 you know, Ted had very strict guidelines on how much he wanted to pay or what he thought would be profitable on costing so much per lower berth, and the ship um, exceeded that. The pinnacle was really, uh, in my view, outstanding. It was, um, you know, probably my biggest professional disappointment that that project wasn't been, wasn't built. The price to build Pinnacle shot way past what Carnival wanted to spend. I mean, really, think about it. Imagine convincing shareholders to allow the company to spend well over a billion dollars on a vessel that wouldn't make its money for another five to six years. And at the time, it just wasn't a practical concept. By February of 2005, Project Pinnacle had been cancelled. However, in an effort to save the Pinnacle concept, Farkas was assigned to draw up something similar to Pinnacle, just scaled back a bit. Joseph and the team drew up Project Next Generation, a vessel borrowing heavily from the Pinnacle. While many of the features Pinnacle had were dropped, the aft split structure remained, along with the mid and stern atriums. This concept, though, would have had two massive carnival funnels. Most of the ship had been reduced with the loss of the people mover system and around three or four decks. However, even with this concept, with all of its reductions, Carnival had decided to just cancel the project. Carnival wanted to stick with building ships they were 100% confident would work and generate more revenue. In 2004 and 2005, Carnival launched three ships, all of which were sisters to their own class. These ships were cheap to build compared to Pinnacle or Next Generation, and were almost guaranteed to turn a fast profit. Many of the features from the Pinnacle project have actually been implemented in ships today. For instance, the funnels from Carnival's Spirit class ships have a portion of red glass that acts as a skylight for the restaurant below. The Dream class from Carnival has an expanded promenade deck, nowhere near the sides of Pinnacles, but still with lots of lounging and even hot tubs. Other cruise lines and ships have adopted some of the design elements, like the panoramic glass room at the stern, which is very similar to what Royal Caribbean has on their Quantum class ships. I don't think any ship is large enough right now other than the Oasis class to warrant a people mover system feature, which is why I don't think we've ever seen it implemented at sea, so it still remains an original and unique concept to Pinnacle. The only thing remotely similar and what kinda reminds me of it is the Celebrity Edge, with its outdoor bar that can move up and down the side of the ship. When Disney was developing the Dream class ships, they had originally planned to put a lazy river that would circle around the ship. However, ultimately opted to a water coaster as deck space was very limited. And that's the thing about Pinnacle though, it had the size to pull off some truly unique things. While Pinnacle was being developed for Carnival, Royal Caribbean had also been developing a super ship unlike any other, called Project Genesis. The only thing is though, while Carnival was never able to see Pinnacle through, Royal Caribbean waited until 2006 to start construction on theirs. And that's what we know now as Oasis, Allure, Harmony, and Sympathy of the Seas. Ever since I was 10 I've known about Project Pinnacle. I perfectly remember watching the concept video for that vessel and being entranced on how incredible the concept was. While personally I'm not a huge fan for Carnival ships, I can say for certain that the designers and executives who worked on Pinnacle were very passionate about the project. While very ambitious, Pinnacle was really going to change the industry. It was beyond revolutionary in entertainment, functionality, and size. An ambitious and unique vessel, which was just caught in the wrong time. It really was a look into the future of cruise ships. 
that we just never got to see. If you want to go see the full interview I had with Joe Farkas, including his personal thoughts on the Oasis-class ships, subscribe to my second channel, Jake Williams. I'll be putting up the full interview there, along with some other extra videos. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>